People born and raised in central New Hampshire likely spend their working years employed by someone they know and work alongside. Big box companies, as a general rule, have little say in the local economy. Instead, the products or services that are needed are provided by local merchants and their small businesses. As an example, there is a fourth generation Dutile & Sons oil company here in Laconia, New Hampshire that my uh, extended family are running. My great-grandfather started it, who passed it on to my grandfather, who has passed it on to my uncles, who will likely pass it on to my cousins. They have provided oil and coal to the people of Laconia for over four generations now. New Hampshire is made up of many such pioneer people who did things on their own and made their own way. In the beginning of town life, neighbors provide essential services like oil and coal to their neighbors because it's what their neighbors need. Each member of the community identifies a product or a service which they can provide, number one, that they had the skill to provide, and number two, that they feel called to provide. And as each member of the community provides those products or services to one another, the town begins to flourish. Each person's vocation becomes their way of serving God by loving their neighbor through the product or service which they provide. However, what history has taught us is that when prosperity begins to result from the products or services which we provide one another, work changes. Work becomes about getting from my neighbor instead of giving to my neighbor. Similarly, when prosperity increases in a community, our recreation takes on a different form as well. The purpose of recreation, be it volleyball or baseball or football or basketball, often begins differently than it ends. I think of the movie The Sandlot. Did the boys in The Sandlot play baseball together every day during the summer because they were hoping to get a college scholarship and one day be famous? No. They were friends. Playing baseball was a way to foster those friendships through a mutually enjoyable activity and the game of baseball helped them learn to work together toward a common goal. So if by chance one uh, boy became famous because of his ability to play baseball, that was secondary and not the goal of the game. Let's think about the evolution of education in a community. At first education is about training the human spirit, about uh, preparing young men and women to be selfless contributors to society. Men learn and become skilled in the professions that will most benefit the community of which they are a part. Women likewise. But take our eyes off of Jesus and our education changes. Education becomes about making a name for myself. It becomes about prestige. It becomes about moving up in the world. Not all fall into this trap, of course, but we must recognize the trend. When community members take their eyes off of Jesus, their vocations change. Their recreations develop selfish ends and their education system loses focus. For a while, these changes satisfy us, but over time, tangible consequences begin to bloat. We neglect the all-important character development of our children, and no longer train them up in the way they should go. Our young people grow up to pursue what is best for themselves instead of what is best for the family and community of which they are a part. Our parents live lonely, isolated lives. Our elderly are devalued as we favor youth and the ability to produce wealth over wisdom and nobility and our souls wander away from the Lord because we've made self-gratification the goal of our life's activity instead of the glory of God. At some point each community must ask with all seriousness, how did we get here and how do we get out of here? I believe the answer is simple, not easy, but simple. We got here as we made something other than Jesus our first love. And we get out of here by surrendering everything to Jesus once again. At Water's Edge, it's our fervent desire to see Laconia, New Hampshire so alive with Jesus again that our schools, our businesses, our families, and our churches radiate His love and truth into our region and beyond. We believe that when Jesus is King in a city, everyone benefits. Our children find true meaning for life. Our families find unity and happiness instead of brokenness and distance. Our businesses are genuine places of service and care. Our judicial system models the ideals of justice. The cycles of addiction, hopelessness, depression, brokenness, and divorce no longer plague our community. Hope becomes real because the kingdom of God becomes real in our city. You say, well, good luck with that vision, Sean. That'll never come to pass. People will never change. And I partly agree with you. Some people will never change. But what about you? What might the Lord begin to do in our city if just you begin to surrender everything to the kingship of Christ? At Water's Edge, we seek to form a community of people absolutely surrendered to Jesus, such that the Lord might use us to transform our city, region, and beyond. 
I invite you to come and be a part of a story, a story that began long before us and will continue on long after us, but a story nonetheless that Jesus invites us into.